What up, this your boy Kenneth Stones, aka Kofi Weesons, one half of the Dirty Hills podcast, and you are watching the 1130 podcast. Not 730, but he is 730. But you watching my guy Dre from the 1130 podcast. Man, make sure y'all hit that like, share, subscribe button. And this is Dirty Hills Approved. I'm from the city, yeah. DC, that's where I'm from, 1130 podcast, Dre Wheels, he is the one, hey. let's get it, yeah, who with me, hey. you know it. let's get it, yeah, you know it. with me, yeah. I'm from the city, yeah. DC, hey. that's where I'm from, let's get it, 1130 podcast, Dre hey, Wheels, he is the one, he the one nigga, so let's get it. baby. Yo, what it do, everybody? It's your man, Dre, a.k.a. Dre on Wheels. This is episode 59 of the 1130 Podcast, Talk Pro Wrestling. What's good, everybody doing out there? Appreciate you guys joining me back here for the podcast, man, for some Talk Pro Wrestling. It's Friday, everybody. Friday is going, man. It's going well. I hope it's going well. Uh, the weekend is upon us, man. But so is Talk Pro Wrestling. We're going to get it all into it, you guys, man. Good morning, good night, good afternoon to all my listeners all across the world. You guys, man, all over the States, Canada, Germany, the UK. You know how we get down, man. Thank you guys for tuning in to the podcast. Whether you're listening to that on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, even on YouTube, man. Yo, so it's going to be fun. If you're new to the 11th, 30 podcasts on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe. Hit that subscribe button down below. Like, leave a comment, and share it so we can get the 1130 podcast up, up, and out there even more. And don't forget to follow the 1130 podcast on all social media platforms. But you guys, man, y'all, I'm back here to talk my crap with pro wrestling. I'm not by myself, you guys. I got a dope guest, you guys. Dope guest coming up here on the podcast with me. My guy, Kwam. Uh, Shakir, you guys, he's a writer for BlurredsOnline.com, you guys. We write, you know, wrestling articles and a bunch of other stuff, man. He's going to be joining me here on the 1130 Podcast Talk Pro Wrestling this week to top it up on some wrestling, you guys. But we ain't going to waste no time, man. We is not going to waste no time, you guys. Wherever you're listening to me at, make sure you go ahead and hit that notification bell, subscribe, and follow so you don't miss an episode of Talk Pro Wrestling, man. So let's get it on, man. Kwame, man, how's it going? Oh man, it's going all right. How, how's it been? Hey man, I'm, I'm doing. It's, it's been wonderful, and I'm doing great, man. I'm doing great. How's your day going? Oh man, it's going awesome. Okay, okay, okay. I like yeah. cheating. I like cheating you. Yeah. Yeah, live stream me pretty good. Okay, okay, cool, cool, man, cool. Where you, where you, where you from? Because I'm, I'm over in DC. The weather is pretty warm here. Oh, I'm uh, from Montgomery, Alabama. Montgomery, Alabama. That's what's up. That's what's up. Yeah. That's cool, cool, cool. But uh, once again, man, like I was saying before the show, I appreciate you joining me here this week on the 1130 Podcast Talk Pro Wrestling. I was saying uh, earlier uh, in the show also, you're a writer for uh, BlurredsOnline.com. And, you know, we was chatting, you know, off, you know, off uh, camera and, you know, through uh, Instagram and stuff, you know, just about, you know, articles that you write, you know, for, you know, some wrestling and stuff like that. We're going to get into all of that. But, um, you know, tell, tell, my, tell my listeners and uh, viewers, you know, about you, you know, because you say you're a writer and stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, I actually uh, started watching wrestling when I was 12 years old. This was during the peak of it all in the late 90s. I remember watching, uh, but before that, I remember flipping through the channels on one hot July night. Didn't find anything that was interesting to me on time. You know, uh, saw never saw a match on Nitro, which was the Goldberg Hogan match, and um, and I remember that crowd man being so electrifying. They were just amped up. They were just crazy. Those late nineties crowds, man, were so absolutely crazy. And wow. Yes. 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 And after that match, that match became my uh, personal introduction to wrestling. I'm like, man, I really like this wrestling stuff. And, you know, so here we are. Hey, that's what's up. So it was the match on WCW with Goldberg. And, and, and Hogan on Nitro. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I spoke about it a lot, man. I came up in the Attitude Era. I didn't yeah. really catch, I didn't really catch too much of, uh, WCW, even though um, I know WCW was, you know, destroying WWF at the time, you know, and they had the NWO, Goldberg, you know, everything. But like you said, man, the fans back in the days, was yeah. one thing, man, just electric. Yeah. Man, electric. especially when you look at our, our Monday Night Raw crowd, every time when you hear the glass breaks and Stone Cold come out there, pop, it got some of the greatest pops 
in the history of wrestling in the late 90s. Yes, he did. Yes, he Man, did. Man, those pops were just fucking wild, dude. <laughs> you right about that, man. It, 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 even the Raw, like in 2000, 2002, got man huge pops, but not on the level that Austin did in the late nineties. Mm-hmm. But he, but the Raw man, this dude, man, was fire on the mic. He was way more drippier than Austin. Yeah. Every time I saw the Raw man, I loved how drippy as hell he looked. More drippier than Seth Rollins. Yeah. <laughs> I even Seth, <laughs> Seth Rollins could touch the drip again <laughs> of uh, the rock back there. Nah, he can't. He can't, man. And no. speaking of the rock, man, the rock is my favorite wrestler, hands down, man. Just oh, man. every every single week he came out there with no. every different shirt and just shades no. on, man. Just he was just the man. It just and, no. and you talking about Stone Cold, you know, the pops that he had. Yeah, he had pops, but man, the flash bulbs that went off when The Rock came up there and went on the top rope and just he just smelt it. He just smelt no. the energy, man. It no. was it was lit, man. <laughs> oh my god. It was lit. It was lit. Them days no. was real awesome, man. Oh, Them days man. were awesome. Uh you, you talked about um you also was on my guy, uh Clock Street Wrestling Podcast, my man Devin, man. Yeah. I, I, he dope. He dope. I love the podcast. Yeah. He just had his 200 and uh 200 show and stuff. Oh, yeah. You was on you was on the show um some time ago, and you were talking about how wrestling changed your life. Can you you know talk about that? Oh, okay. You know, man, like the early 90s, like 90 through 92, those are like the worst years of my life. During that period, I was going through a lot of personal and emotional uh struggles, like losing you know, uh, my auntie to an overdose, seeing my two oldest brothers go to prison and nearly drowning to death um, at a swimming pool during the field trip. And uh, I felt like I wanted to end my life until I saw uh, the OG Power Rangers one day on Saturday morning. And upon seeing it, I was like, oh my God, this show saved my life. I fucking love this shit. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, after that run in it, then I turned to wrestling. And then once I saw wrestling, like I said earlier, man, the rest is just history. Mm. Okay, okay. No. Uh, that, that's, that's, that's very interesting, man. You just mentioned, you know, the Power Rangers and stuff like that, man. No. I was a big Power Ranger fan. Who was oh, your favorite oh, yeah. Ranger? Who was your favorite Ranger? Man, um, uh, Zach Taylor. Okay, okay. That's what's up. That's what's up. Yeah. Uh, my favorite Ranger, though, I, man, the White Ranger. The White Ranger oh, oh, was my oh, guy. <laughs> oh, oh, I love the White Ranger too, by the way. <laughs> yeah, that was man. That was, yeah. that was that was my Ranger, man. Power Rangers was everything, man. Just the stories oh, yeah. and everything, man. But uh, yeah, yeah, man. I definitely, I definitely you know, know. You know what? what? It, it, you know, it makes me uh, think about you know uh, back then the squash matches used to mean something in wrestling, but mm-hmm. now nowadays these squash matches don't really feel as special like they did back then. Even the Power Rangers, for the most part. Were beating up jobbers in the form of putties. <laughs> the putties were used to put the power ranges over before they fought the, the big bad heel at the end of the episode. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Wrestling, wrestling has you know changed the whole lot these days, man. Oh um, yeah. But we're gonna move on here, you guys on the podcast. We're gonna get right back into some more of that. But um, you guys, uh last uh what was it, last Thursday, I believe, or the, the Thursday before that. Um a cool, cool documentary came out that uh, Vice uh, produced. I was talking a little bit about this on the main podcast this week, and I said I was going to dive more into it. And, uh, but have you seen the uh, China documentary? Oh, yes, I have seen the China, the China documentary. Yeah, It was, man, that, that documentary was so emotional. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, the, the to me, the MVP of that episode was Vince Russo because he generally cared for and wanted to help her. The, the LVP was the ultimate scumbag in Anthony, you know, from like, you know, from man, just taking advantage and exploring her when she was at her most vulnerable mm-hmm. to uh, disrespecting the wishes of her mother by o- only um, pouring half of the, the, her ashes in the ocean and keeping the other half to put it on display at the memorial. I was just, man, I was just absolute angry at this dirt bag. Yeah, man. That episode, had, I mean, I, I tried to find it. I thought it was a part of the Dark Side of the Ring uh, series for a moment, but it wasn't. But I, I found the episode. But, man, the joke is literally crazy. Yeah. And then, like, my favorite part about the documentary, we see China just, man, get reaching the peak of her career that no other woman has ever done since. 
Those pops that China got were way bigger than the pops these women uh, get today. That's a special on WWE flagship television. Yeah, you're right about that. Well, like I, like I was just trying to say um, before I outside was trying to interrupt me, but uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, man, the documentary is off the chain, man. Uh, the part that kind of like got me upset also because you know when she first you know coming into wrestling business, she was you know very you know no. muscular. You know, yeah. stuff like that, real buff and stuff. And um, WWE, at least Triple H and stuff, you know, Sean, yeah. they wanted yeah. to, you know, put her with DX and stuff. But, you know, years after that, then, you know, went, you know, ran his course. Vince McMahon wanted her player as a as a diva. And she wasn't a diva. And, you know, trying to take her two steps back when she was just trying to, you know, take some steps forward and just yeah. continue fighting men. She was the Intercontinental Champion. Yeah. She was in the Royal Rumble. Yeah. You know, it was just so much, you know, that went yeah. on the course, you know. Um, and someone said, and someone said this about uh, Sean Waltman in China, and I just didn't, you know, hear too much of it. But, you know, seeing that, you know, he, he definitely also played on a vulnerability and just... Everything about that man, it was just yeah. crazy though. We, yeah, he, yeah, he also admitted that he, yeah, he was a, yeah, he was an asshole that you know should have helped him. Yeah, by by his own miss. But anyway, um, like China, man, she is one of the most iconic, legendary women's wrestlers of all time. Uh, she paved the way for so many women, like the the ma- the strong, big, athletic, masculine women we see today from uh, Bianca Belair. Jay Cargill and even Raquel Gonzalez. Mm-hmm. If it wasn't for Beyond, if it weren't for China, we would not even see those type of women on in, in today's you know era of wrestling. Yeah. You know, competing in a ring and going up against some of the best women uh, from around the world, like Io Shirai and Dakota Kai, and you know, uh, Super Charlotte, as I call her. <laughs> the reason why I call her Super Charlotte, she's like a female super singer. She's mm-hmm. become the person, the woman. That most fans can't stand at this point. Just like when Super Cena was getting all the wins back then, let's be honest, we hated it. When yeah. he was getting those, he was winning after winning after winning. And guess what? That BS ending to the real Charlotte match at Hell in a Cell was downright atrocious. Oh man. Hey man. man like, it was God let's, awful. <laughs> let's let's get into it then. Cause I, I was gonna talk about that in a bit, but let's get into it. Because I was just like. All she did was just hit her with the the yeah. top of the commentary table, and they just say ring the bell. Like, come on! They just, what I think they just trying to prolong this until money in the bank until Becky comes back. So yeah. you know, like, but I, I don't know. But like you said, Super Charlotte, and she's winning championships after championships. Yeah. Um. Her that's her only character. She wins championships after championships. She they can't really book her in a few outside the title. Mm-hmm. That's what one of my biggest gripes about Charlotte's booking for years, yeah. and um, it, you know the real Charlotte fan was was something that was, that we were interested in three months ago, and because of how badly they booked the feud, we don't even care for that feud, especially with this BS finish this past Sunday. Yeah, you right about that. That feud that, that was BS, and that thing they're no. just trying to they trying to make her, you know, just like her father. You know, I mean, no. what other whatever way would you go? with Ric Flair's daughter, you know? No. Like, I mean, I don't think The Rock's daughter, I don't think she's gonna come out there getting on top ropes, talking about if you smell, la, 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 you know, no. like, or, or whatever the case may be, or Rock Lesnar's son or The Undertaker's son, whatever. But what other way would you go with Ric Flair's daughter and Ric Flair is like a 16-time world champion, though? Know? As a matter of fact, as a matter of 16-time world champion is revisionist history. That's not actually correct. Rick mm-hmm. Blair's actually won more world titles than uh, WWE uh, gives him credit for. Mm-hmm. I think he won like 21, 22, 23 world titles. But then he's only counted for 16. But those other six, seven um, title runs they had were pretty controversial. That's why they don't know those. That's mm-hmm. why they only, they only address him as a 16 time world champion. Yeah, they, they literally want to make Charlotte like her father. Yeah, Charlotte, we're going to keep giving you the title, keep giving you the title until. It, until you somewhat break your father's record. All of her title runs on the main roster, if you notice, are just meaningless. Because she's never really had that great of a title run, you know, on the flagship show. Mm-hmm. Nah, she haven't. She just been, like you said, super Cena. And in my in my opinion, uh, just, just my opinion though, I think the female 
uh, roster, the female, the, the women's division need, uh, they don't necessarily need a super Cena, but they need someone in that, you know, that, that can be yeah. that. You know, without saying, or without, you know, because what we got, we only got the women's tag team titles and we only got the, the women's championship, for, you know, so it's not too much the women sort of could fight for unless they just in a single feud. So, I mean, you know, if you're trying to, you know, make a name for yourself, you beat Charlotte, you know? So I guess, I guess that's that. I don't, I, I, I don't know, man. Well, well, uh, well, the way WWE books this, mm -hmm. if you go up against Charlotte, either you get, you most likely you're not even going to win clean you will get the golden shovel treatment from wwe most likely and shot and, and rio did not want to get that golden shovel treatment so that's why they decided all right, we're going to book the bs uh finish i'm like oh man no i i, I just don't care for this anymore this is bs just get it over mm, yeah that is crazy man that, that finisher was really bull crap speaking of and then and then and then uh also held the cell I saw one of the worst finishes that I've ever seen. Uh, the fucking roll up from Doom in the Hell in a Cell match. Bobby Lashley and, and Super Drew. I mean, I, yeah, Bobby Lashley and Super Drew. This guy's been getting opportunity after opportunity after opportunity, and it's getting tiresome. Yeah. And then Bobby beats him with the roll up of Doom. I was just, I was just shaking my head in disbelief, man. Man, the pay per view was just. It was something else though, but um, I, I, I see, I see you talked about it on uh, on Instagram, the roll up of doom. No, it, it, it is, it is. Come on, it's the world title match though. Like neither one of y'all could have. And if this was going to be, and, and not even if it was, it was uh Drew, like you said, super Drew, like you say, uh, last match. Why couldn't Drew just uh lose clean? I, I really didn't understand that one right there though. But um, yeah. I, what was going on with that? Like Drew and Drew getting these title shots after title shots. I felt bad for Drew at first because he became champion in the beginning of this pandemic. Yeah. I felt like they gave him the title back. What? Like, like Hell in a Cell when he beat Randy Orton again or something yeah. like that. So it's, it, yeah, I'm definitely, we can move on from Drew now, you know, to see what's next for him. But, but, yeah. um, but yeah, anyway, uh, the Bobby Lashley Kofi Kingston match at uh, Money in the Bank is very interesting to me because okay. Kofi has not had his rematch since, man, that awful burial two years ago on SmackDown on Fox. Mm -hmm. So now this is like a chance for Kofi to get some redemption. But as good as, of a match as this is going to be, I really want this to main event hell in the cell. The Tribal Chief, he can sit this one out too, man. Okay. He can sit this. He can sit this pay per view out too, just like he sat out hell in the cell because he didn't want to work on Father's Day. I, I figured that. I figured that yeah. he didn't want to work on Father's Day, and I was just like, why did he? Why, why did they have the hell in the cell match on SmackDown and not? Yeah. Be, you know, it yeah. was it, it was weird. It, it was really but, weird. Yeah, taking that uh, hell in the cell match between him and Rey Mysterio from the pay per view movement on SmackDown that took the life out of that pay per view. It did. It really did. That, that sucked all the air out of that paper. It really did. It really did. It really did. Because that, that, and then the crazy thing I said, Roman Reigns was like, well, if I'm not going to be the main event, I don't, I don't want to be there. And I was thinking, okay, it is also Father's Day. So he probably was, you know, wanted to be with his kids. And yeah. they probably told him that, you know, Drew and Bobby is going to main event. You know, it's going to be they go off match, they're going to main event. Yeah. You know, with the travel chief persona, he like, man, fuck that, man. I'm, I'm, if I ain't made a band, <laughs> you know, I, I ain't dead. <laughs> so, like, man, yeah. but yeah, that took out, that, that took everything out of the pay per view because the oh, yeah. story with all the bloodline and everything is, it's magic. Yeah. It's gold. It's, I love it. Oh, I yeah, it. absolutely. Uh, but you was just talking about uh, Kofi Kingston, Bobby Lashley at uh, Money in the Bank, which is going to be a great because I love him. The way MVP is kind of playing mind games with Kofi Kingston. Yeah. Who, you on, who you think gonna win it? Oh man, you know, as, as hard as Kofi will fight in this match, but in the end, Bobby's gonna, you know, tap him out to the hurt lock. Okay, yeah. <laughs> which will be a much better, which will be a much better finish than the trash roll of a doom finish we saw out on the sale. So yeah, and it, and it and it seemed like they couldn't, I guess, put the hurt lock on Bobby and make him. I don't know, I don't know, but. Yeah, this this is gonna be Kobe Kingston's uh first what WWE championship match since since uh losing yeah. to Brock also. Yeah, yeah, this is gonna be interesting. This is gonna be interesting, man. 
Yeah. What you, what, you you think Brock Lesnar is coming back anytime soon? I heard fans were kind of a little disappointed that he did not return at Hell in the Cell. I, w- I wouldn't be surprised if he returned after the Bobby Lashley Kobe Kings match and stared down Lashley because people wanted to see a Bobby Lashley versus Brock Lesnar match because these two guys are big, muscular, and strong men. Vince always has a fetish for, and plus uh, they've also competed in MMA, which. Um, if I recall, Bobby Lashley had like a 15-2 record in MMA. Mm-hmm. Bobby Lashley was straight beating up dudes in MMA. They couldn't even man, take him down. Yeah, they could. Bobby Lashley yeah. was off, off, the, off the chain in MMA. Um, yeah. Also, man, in the Hell in the Cell, a weird matchup. What, what, what's your thoughts on Alexa Bliss? Uh, oh, I, the, I, whole, the whole Alexa Bliss and Shayna Baszler thing. Man, that, that was an abomination. <laughs> One of the worst women's wrestling matches of this year was an abomination. So she got magic powers now? Yeah, she's the female fiend, and it's an abomination. Mm. I, 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 I agree with you. <laughs> that, I, I agree right that, with that, you. That, 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 that match was just, just, just downright awful. Yeah, it really was. That, that made me want to turn the TV off. Yeah. After that one, you really couldn't come back from it. You really, you, you really couldn't no. come. The, the match of the night, it, I say the match of the night or one of the matches of the night was Bianca and Bailey. Oh, yeah. They, they, you know, oh, yeah. I, I loved how Bianca hit her finisher on the ladder. You know, yeah. it was like, yo, that that was fire right there. Yeah, man. that's so got, wall. Yeah, she got her first uh, Hell in a Cell victory under her belt, man. But uh, yeah. Yeah, man. wrestling, man, wrestling is real interesting these days. Wrestling is real yeah. interesting these days. What what is wrestling missing? What was missing? In today's wrestling, you know, I've actually complained about this. I feel like, you know, compared to the 80s, 90s, and even 2000s, there's too much of an overemphasis on uh, acrobat gymnastics stuff. When you watch many of these uh, men's wrestling matches, especially nowadays, like it's almost like every few minutes, here comes a hot spot here, a hot spot there. Like they, they really, like many of these guys really mark for themselves when they do this stuff. They, they don't really sell the well. They don't really, like, connect with their moves well. They, they just do it just because they mark for themselves. And that completely takes me out of a match. If I see all this, like, you know, flippy shit, I'm like, <laughs> man, I don't want to watch this. I'd rather watch uh, an old school, uh, you know, rock, ma- rock versus Triple H at, uh, you know, Jumping Day 2000 to watch this flippy shit. Oh, that, that's a good one. That's a really good one, right there. <laughs> and yeah. the, the the the, the pay per view before that one was in DC. I wanted to go that so bad. I went to my grandmother's house, fresh or so, and we man, we went off, man, when The Rock won that match against Triple H, though. Oh and man, then, that yeah. <laughs> and you mentioned the matchup, uh, Judgment Day with The Rock and uh. Uh, yeah. Triple H in the Iron Man yeah. match. I remember watching that. You you remember back in the days where if you didn't have pay per view and the TV was scrambled and you had to watch it on the scrambled TV. Yeah, yeah, that was me all day. That was me all day. But yeah, yeah. good moments, good moments though. But uh, oh yeah, yeah, man, wrestling is definitely missing something. Um, yeah, and I, and uh, also and also I feel like re- wrestling is missing. Like for for me, these theme pay per views in WWE. Have really lost their luster. They lost their uniqueness and appeal because now it's now a pay per view, and I don't like this because it significantly wars down the significance and the impact of these mat of these theme matches like Elimination Chamber, Money in the Bank, Hell in the Cell, and TLC. Mm-hmm. Hell in the Cell and, for Hell in the Cell, prime example. Um, no, absolutely. They, the they, war, go ahead, the go war, ahead. the the worst finish I had ever seen in my twenty three years of watching wrestling. Was Seth Rollins in the Fiend in 2019 in a Hell in a Cell match? Man, that man, the crowd just absolute shitted mm-hmm. all over that finish. Mm-hmm. That finish was downright trash. Yeah, <laughs> it was, man. It was Hell in a Cell, prime example, man. They they had it on SmackDown. Yeah, that was cool. First time ever Hell in a Cell match on SmackDown on Fox. Great. Uh, then you have the Hell in a Cell pay per view, and then. We hear that USA Network um, yeah. is pissed off because yeah. because WWE didn't you know put the Hell in the Cell or have a Hell in the Cell theme show on Raw. So you know what WWE did? They just suckered up to to the network because that's what yeah. you got to do. You got to sucker up to the network and make yeah. them happy. So you know, yeah. soon as Raw comes on, pyros go off, and while the pyros going off, 
excuse me, while the pyros are going off, you see the hell in the cell. If anything, in my yeah. opinion, I wouldn't have showed that camera angle. You feel no. me? If Xavier was going to challenge Bobby and say, yo, man, it's going to be a hell in the cell, but then do an old school style where you just pan up to the hell in the cell and be like, oh, wow, the hell in the cell is still here? Then that would have been cool. But now it's just like, really? Yeah, now y'all just doing it every other day now. And just, it, it doesn't have a special meaning to it no more, like, like no. I said. So, no, it, it, no, it doesn't. And, and that's what sucks about it. Mm -hmm. That's what sucks yeah. about it. <laughs> I'm with you, man. I'm exactly with you. Uh, speaking of what sucks, man, Monday Night Raw, man, man, is three hours. And when it came to three hours back in July, I was back in July 2012. I was really, you know, excited about it. I was like, okay, cool. But a lot of people really said it on the course because that's what WCW did. Yeah. So they went out of business with Nitro. They made it three yeah. hours. I was a big wrestling fan at that point. Still is now, but I was just like, two hours just wasn't enough. And I was always a mark for the three hours that they did do when they did it. Um, besides the extra third hour, what's wrong with Raw also? Man, you know, Raw feels like, man, feels like ground all day. The movie ground all day where, you know, it's like, it's, it's like it's things are happening over and over and over yeah. and over again. Mm -hmm. It's like the same rinse and repeat matches. You got too much filler garbage. Mm -hmm. And then you got almost the exact same people every week on Raw. Yeah. And then and and just like you said on one of your previous podcasts, they don't really utilize that third hour well. No, they do not. Oh my because, goodness. Because 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 all they do is like you said earlier, is suck up and kiss up to the network's ass. Mm -hmm. That's why they will never pull back for that third hour because of that. Yeah, you're right. And the, as they already said, the third hour makes them a lot of money, though. Um, no. Impact did it in a certain way, which I always say would be great if WWE did it. Um, Impact, I started getting back into Impact Wrestling a little bit. Uh, but uh, Impact, of course, two hours. Before Impact, we got before the bell comes on and stuff. They had a one hour Iron Man matchup before the bell that lead it right into the show. Why WWE just can't do stuff like that? You know, to utilize the third hour to have people interested. Maybe, I understand, maybe no one wants to do all those fucking commercial breaks. I know I wouldn't. Yeah, but I mean, man, like, they gotta do something. Yeah, there's way too many commercials, man, on, on Raw. Just too many commercials. All the commercials are telegraphed. You often hear announcers say, well, we about to go to commercial break. We'll be right back. Yeah, very, very. It's, it's a lot, man. It, it is a lot, I guess, yeah. you know, with the times that we came up in the wrestling, that the yeah. man was just so, it was so hot, it was so there, and the company yeah. just grew. It just grew and kept yeah. growing, and I guess this is where we at now, man. But uh, we, I heard Vince McMahon was, he found out that the company, you know, uh, I mean, we didn't find out, we acknowledged that, yes, the company has run its course, and it is stale, but let's see what he do about it. Let's, let, let's see what he do about it. Everyone has something to say, a story to tell. We make it easy to share yours. So let's talk. Regardless of your podcast setup, hit record. And from there, whether your podcast reaches 10 people or 10 million, we can help you get heard wherever listeners are. And who knows, maybe even quit your day job. But no matter who hears you, it's about connecting and sharing something from your perspective. It's about having a voice and using it without anything standing in your way. Say it all with mm. Anchor. Um, speaking of Monday Night Raw, a lot of fans, even I have voiced my opinion uh, on social media Monday night. Um, do drop. Uh, what's, your, what's your thoughts on do drop? Man, but I, I said she, <laughs> she, she's a really good. She, she's a really good wrestler, but the way they're using her with, uh, you know, even Marie to me is really not very good, especially. Yeah. Man, especially that that uh, atrocious squash match that happened last Monday with Naomi, which pissed a lot of people, including me off. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I feel yeah. like that. I feel like there are better ways to use uh, Piper Niven on Raw. Yeah, it's really better ways though. I, I mean, uh, someone said maybe you know, there's multiple ways that they probably couldn't use the, you know, her name Piper Niven. Maybe somebody else got. I don't know because you know they they on national television and she's yeah. not on NXT UK no more, but she started to say her name a little bit, but I, I don't, I really don't know. I really don't know about it at all. Raw is just, Raw is crazy. Another thing surrounding Monday Night Raw uh, this past Monday uh, were before Raw and I think after Raw, they had some dark matches for main event or just dark matches, period. 
uh, Karrion Cross and Bronson Reed are speculation to be coming up to the flagship roster. Yeah. Uh, what's your thoughts on uh, Karrion Cross and Bronson Reed coming up and just both of them in general? Even though I, I feel like Karrion Cross, as polarized as he is to a lot of people, but he doesn't fit, fit well in NST. I, I feel like he's kind of off there. The matches he has with the smaller dudes, even the Bass Day Sevens, it looked like to me he's kind of like uh, out of place. I feel like he's more meant for the flagship roster than NST. So I would not be surprised if they, um, you know, have him drop the top without him getting pinned. So that way they could bring him up to the flash of roster. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was speculation that, you know, that would have happened yeah. at uh, In Your House because he was in a fatal five way match and he didn't have to be pinned, but he took down Kyle O'Reilly and he yeah. retained his title. Um, Kevin Cross is dope, man. I, I really, I really dig him. Um, yeah, a lot of people say that even my guy, uh, Sir Wilkins from the Job and Tears podcast, you know. Uh, and some other you know podcasters, man. He just he belongs on the main roster, and you know, see what you do. I think a lot of guys belong on the main roster. I think the last maybe year or two, NXT has not. I said this numerous of times has not been that revolving door that it usually been because yeah. um, it seemed like people is now going back instead of going forward. And you know, it, and, it was good. And the reason for that is because the bad booking, you know, case in point, you know, Finn Balor and Amamu, when they went back, wow, they, they've had, man, amazing runs there mm -hmm. when they went back mm -hmm. because they were also victims of the, um, you know, uh, flash of roster booking malpractice. Yeah. Uh -huh. Which is a common thing to many of these former uh, NST, you know, stars that, you know, get called up to the flash of roster. We have seen it time and time mm -hmm. again. Yes. Yeah, and, nope. and the war and the worst call up that I've ever seen was Keith Lee's last year, mm -hmm. post SummerSlam, when 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 I heard Bask in his glory, I thought I was going to hear the limitless thing, and they changed it to some generic garbage, yeah, and yeah. I was just, oh my god, what have they done to this guy? <laughs> yeah, man, I, and I, I completely get you. You know, when they you know come up to the main roster and it's nothing for them, or I don't have nothing for you, or you know X Y Z. Um, I, I truly get that. And when Finn Balor came back down, Amber Moon came back down hot, real hot. And but I like you said, I just don't know why these guys do go up there and they just like Vince McMahon or the creative don't have nothing for them. And it just seems like it's just night and day from when Shayna Baszler was NXT women's champion to yeah. right now. You know, it's, it's 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 like literally night and day for a lot of people. Yeah. And I just I don't, I don't really understand it. Like I would love to see Adam Cole on the main roster, but of course, a lot of guys from there don't want to come up because they yeah. happy. And of course, we already yeah. knew what happened to a lot of girl, guys and girls yeah. that came up to the main roster or the flagship like, show and, and didn't go nowhere. And speaking of Shayna Baszler, man, when she was in NST two years ago, like man, she man, she she was a badass. She's a legit badass that can whoop any woman's ass, but. Man, this may well less of bliss to me as absolute killed whatever credibility that you know Shane Face I loved. <laughs> it just killed it. The hell in the cell was the ultimate nail in the coffin for her. Sad. <laughs> it is real sad, man. Every time I see Shane Baszler, I just get really, really like really upset because I know who she was at NXT. She was no. a badass, you know. No. She had a group with the two shorties, you know. I can't think of their names no. right now, but Man, they they was dope, man, and just oh. now she just with yeah, she just <laughs> yeah, she's just another face on the roster, unfortunately. That's crazy, man. Mm, 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 mm. But we can move on, you guys, man. Here on Talk Pro Wrestling, uh, we're talking about NXT, man. Uh, how you feel about the crowds coming back? Because I, I really hope the crowds be a little bit different than what NXT in your house crowd was. Because yeah, that that that, yeah. that wasn't that wasn't good. Yeah, that crowd was just dead, uh, especially during the main event. All right, whenever those other four guys would get offense, they would get some reaction. But when Karrion Cross got some offense, they went silent. Mm -hmm. Like this, like the double or nothing crowd, they they went into all almost all the matches with the exception of Cody versus a go go. With the exception of that match, they went to all the matches. But this crowd felt like you're going to a funeral crowd. <laughs> <laughs> this crowd, this crowd at in your house. Felt like a funeral crowd. Yeah, 
it was it was it was solid. And I think it was a lot of, you know, I think because it was a lot of people's first time back and you know, I I I, I, don't, I really don't know, but I mean, it was my first time back. I haven't been to the last wrestling show uh, of WWE was in Washington DC here, Monday Night Raw, and that was the last one. So if I know if I'm back at the first show since then, I'm going crazy. I'm going nuts, man. And yeah. just like you said, AEW, man, double or nothing. They were going crazy, man. Yeah. They were going crazy though. But uh, yeah, man, I'm uh, looking for I'm looking forward to the live crowds coming back because now WWE can get, get the hell out of the board dome. Yeah. Because yeah. the board don't the board dome has ran its course at this point. Yeah. So having those live fans back to see, you know, which wrestler will get over, which store wrestler doesn't get over, which storyline gets over, and which storyline doesn't get over with us, that right there will tell them everything they need to know about what to do and how to book the sort of wrestler or storyline. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Um, that's that's the, that is that is there's something to uh look forward to because when the crowd comes back and it's going to be amazing. Like you said, the Thunderdome has, has ran its course. You said the Boredom Dome. Uh, uh, yeah, I think with, with now with um, AEW got fans back, NXT got some fans. Yeah. And then when you watch Raw, SmackDown, it, it, you're like, yeah, okay, I'm, I'm tired of this now. Yeah, I'm really, I'm really tired of it. They can, they can go yeah. ahead. But, uh, yeah, once they do get the fans back, like you said, it will kind of like tell them which direction to go into. But who knows? Yeah. But uh, – you know, they 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 fuck around and made chair Roman Reigns and they want them yeah. to boo him, you know, like we were talking about this on, on the podcast before. Like the fans were were like chair who they really trying to push as a heel and boo. Like I feel like I feel like for some reason though, for some reason, I just feel like this though. We're gonna we're gonna get into um I just feel like this. They're gonna boo uh Bianca Belair when the fans get back. You know, you know what? Um, and you know this too. WWE fans are notorious for being fickle. For example, mm-hmm. like after Kofi won the title, two months later they turn on because of how they were, you know, booking them during this title run. Mm-hmm. And I have a bad feeling they're going to, um, you know, boo Bianca Belair on the first smack on the first SmackDown on July 16th with fans. I feel as though too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because because of how she's been booked during the title yep. run. Yep, this whole run right here. Like I personally said. She should have not won the title at WrestleMania. And they just pulled the gun on it because they didn't have no other choice. And she was hot. So, like, come on. Like, but I feel as though she should have won the title just yet. Um, I feel as though she, she should have won the title maybe at this this summer or at WrestleMania next year. Because, you know, with and, and then like the whole thing with Drew now, everybody's tired of him because the fans, no fans yeah. is there, and people, you know, like. The way they pushing them, it's just, it's a whole lot, man. It's a whole lot. Yeah. But, um, hey, that's that. We're we going to move on, you guys, here on the podcast. Speaking of fans and the way superstars sort of, you know, react to all of them, uh, Samoa Joe is back. Um, how, how you feel about that? Oh, man, it's great to see him back. I've, you know, I've been a huge fan of Samoa Joe for, you know, ever since his TNA days. And, man, this guy, hey, he's one guy you would not want to mess with. <laughs> he's one of those guys that you would not want to mess with for real because once he hits you in that coquina clutch, you done. Yeah, you're done. You're done. Joe, Joe, Joe's the yeah. man. Joe's the man. Yeah. Um uh did he had to go, did he had to go back down? He was just talking, did he had to go back down to NXT? Yeah, because uh he's now uh you know Mr. Regal's uh diesel. Okay. Mr. Wow. Regal's uh version of diesel. Okay. Uh, okay. I get that. I get that. That's cool. Yeah. But well, out of all this time, why did why did why do Regal need a diesel now? Yeah. But, well, you know, because he wanted to um, have some protection just in case people like Karen Cross try you know tries to attack him. Hmm. Okay. I just, mean, I just, clearly. <laughs> I yeah. just want. I just want your point. I just want you. You know, your perspective. It's always yeah. dope to hear. You know, other wrestler. You know, fans' perspective yeah. of it. Because you know um, NXT man is just it seemed like it lost its little buzz a little bit because uh, um, like you said the same guys is there it's just not too many new people um, also is because um, they're trying to they trying with the ratings the way it is they they trying too hard to get a lot of people in they pulled Ted um, Ted DiBiase in which the story is great I love it you know I love it between LA Knight and um, uh, uh, Cameron Grimes, because he's going yeah. to the moon, man. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love that. But I just feel as though, man, like, 
it, it, you know, the guy, it should, they doing a lot just to try to get the viewers up. And guys and girls that we had on the main roster, not there no more. That's why, and also because of the WWE releases, everything is just getting recycled again. Yeah. And just, it's just a big circle and we're not, getting, we're not going nowhere. That's, yeah. that's that's just basically how I feel right now. One way that is it, one way that NST to me can be better. All they gotta do is get out of uh, the Capitol Wrestling Center and uh, you know the full cell. If they start having like these much bigger crowds, man, it would make the presentation of the shows look so much better for NST. Okay, so it's just the fact that they're in the, the smaller performance center. Yeah. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. I get you, man. I get you. I get you. Uh, but you guys, man, we're going to move on here on Talk Pro Wrestling. Uh, come on, man. You spoke about representation in wrestling. Um, man, it's very important because lately we've been having a lot of, you know, African-American black wrestlers, yep. you know, on top of the wrestling world, yep. man. You know, we was just talking about Bianca Belair. I should main event it. Um, Bobby Lashley winning the yep. WWE championship. Yep. And, you know, two, two, what, two, three years ago, our Kofi Kingston became the WWE champion. Yep. What's next for black wrestlers, man, and, yep. and, and pro wrestling? Man, this is like the best time to be a black wrestling fan right now because seeing this representation of us, you know, at, at the top of the card, and especially among the women, uh, to me, is such a beautiful sight to see because when we were watching wrestling during the late 90s, we didn't see that many uh, people that looked like us on TV. Nope. But now you see so many people that look like us on TV, and it's such a beautiful sight. Mm -hmm. I love it. I because it, because it's such good shit. <laughs> I love it, man. You right about that. It, it's some good shit, man. Because uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, everybody was talking about, and, and I didn't pay attention to. It, I didn't really know. I mean, I watched it. I didn't notice that when Brock, when, no, excuse me, Bobby was taking on Kofi in the main event of Raw. That was like the first time two black guys went one on one in the main event of Raw. So I was like, yo, man, that's, that's dope. Like, we just yeah. keep on making, you know, keep on making history. I, yeah. I just want to, yeah. you know, I, I, think, I think that's the first ever time that um, ever that two black wrestlers main event in an episode of Raw. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's awesome, man. That's that's really yeah. awesome. We going up, man. Black black folks in wrestling is going yeah. up, like you said, because I didn't, it wasn't too many, especially um, black people wasn't given that many to a many no. opportunities in wrestling back in the days at all. So yeah, man, this is a good it's a good time it, to be a wrestler. Yeah, it, even even black wrestlers on the Indies, man, are just absolute killing it on the Indies. Mm -hmm. They're winning, they're winning gold, and it, it's just amazing, man. I, and you know what? The drippiest black wrestler to me right now is Bobby Lashley. When you look at him wearing the suit with the WWE tie around his shoulder, man, he looks like a million bucks. Yeah. This man is money, big money. <laughs> he is, big and money. I, I absolutely love it, man. His drip is just awesome. Yeah, he is. Man. He's, he's even more drippy than self freaking Rollins. Oh man, that, that's a competition, man. We're gonna have that Bobby Lashley, uh, 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 John Morrison, and Seth Rollins in a drip contest, man. <laughs> They all three got to be in a drip contest. We got, <laughs> we got, we got Morrison on Raw, splashing no. drip. <laughs> no. And we got <laughs> Seth Rollins really dripping it on SmackDown. No. <laughs> and Bobby is just the man, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because Bobby, yeah, Bobby's bigger and tougher than both of them. Yeah, you know, Bobby, yeah, he's definitely the man on Raw. He sure is, man. He really yeah. is. I, I can't wait to see what's next for Bobby. And if Bobby yeah. gonna take on Brock Lesnar at a, at a SummerSlam, he got put him in the, uh, he got put him in the Hurt Lock. Yeah, put him in the Hurt Lock, make him tap out. Yeah, he do, he do. Uh, uh, speaking of uh, independent wrestling, you just brought it up, man. Like, you from Montgomery, Alabama. Uh, what, what goes on, you know, uh, as far as independent shows there and stuff like that? Well, you know, there's actually independent shows in other parts of the state. But, um, you know, and speaking of that, recently I watched an uh, independent show called Black Wrestlers Matter 2. Like, the car was like, man, the car was super stacked. I think it had like 12, 13 matches. Mm -hmm. And the main event match between frontman uh, Josh C and JDS, man, that was, man, that match was fire. That was like the best match on the entire car. I just could not get enough of this match. Mm -hmm. And um, man, that right there was history in the making. The first ever Black Wrestlers Matter champion was crowned in that match when Jay, um, when Josh C won 
by beating um, um, you know, JDS in that match. Man, I, I remember being so happy, clapping, just applauding the match after it ended. Because I was loving it. It was a 30-minute match. Hey, that's what's up, man. That's what's up. You said black wrestling matters too? Black wrestlers matter too, y'all. Black wrestlers matter too. I gotta definitely check that out, man. Cause a lot of people I have on the show, man, always be like, man, yo, man, I I be definitely on the independent scene, man. Definitely on the independent yeah. scene, cause it's it's crazy. It's going, you know, it's yeah. going crazy right now, man. You know, with WWE, all you know, doing what they doing, man. I, uh, yeah. But everybody definitely paying attention to what's going on right now in the indie scene. I definitely got to get on top of that. Uh, speaking of, uh, well, we're going to move on and speaking of some, you know, indie wrestlers or, you know, something like that. Uh, what's your thoughts on AEW, man? Uh, you know, even though I haven't watched AEW much, but I will tell you that um, MMA uh, segment between Hager and Warlow was bullshit. <laughs> I, I, I'll say it again. It was bullshit, though. Yeah. But, I remember <laughs> the Samoa Joe Curry Angle MMA fight in 2008. That was way better than this bullshit on Dynamite last week. Mm-hmm. Even even the uh, I think it was a cage fight between was it Tommaso Ciampa and Tim- Timothy Thatcher? Yeah, I think in NXT. No, it was no, no, it was between Timothy Thatcher and uh, Matt Real. The, Matt the cage yeah, fight. Yeah, 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 that was even better than what they yeah. did on AEW. Yeah, absolutely. Like, it was horrible. Like Jake Jack Jake Yeager is actually MMA Bellator fighter. Like, what was those hits though? I mean, he did kind of like hit Warlord yeah. in the nose one time. Which was kind of funny though, but I mean, like, yeah. what, what what the hell was that? Like, it, you know it, what? I, I got a better. Idea. I will book this better. This could have been Chris Cyborg MMA legend versus Thunder Rosa. Chris <laughs> Cyborg said, "Man, hey, how about you and I, Thunder Rosa, uh, face each other in an MMA AEW fight?" She said she was all for it, man. Mm-hmm. Even that would have been better than this bullshit that we saw on, uh, last Friday. It was it was really like they, they 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 can't do that like and we all know you know we all wrestling fans. and the thing is though like it seems no. like what wrestling does they are constantly of course you want new fans you want new viewers but they're no. constantly going after the new fan and saying no. fuck us we we've been wrestling fan for twenty some years we forget us nah we want no. we want the new viewer and like come on like you really like we you know what and, we want like no. and we we know what wrestling is like. Come on, yeah. they're not really gonna be in a sanctioned MMA fight. We know that they're gonna be in a wrestling. This is wrestling. Why the hell is an MMA fight starting off this show? Let alone yeah. this coming on at ten o'clock after SmackDown at that too. So you, you know what? Hey, you know, hardcore MMA fans don't care much for professional wrestling. Mm-hmm. If they saw this, they would be like, "What the fuck is this?" Man, I'm pretty sure they would. They, they 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 would, they would be pissed if they saw that. <laughs> On the wrestling show, I was pissed, man. I, yeah. I was, I was really pissed. I, I'd rather, I'd rather watch the Samoa Joe Crango uh, MMA fight or the Timothy Thatcher uh, Matt Real fight again than to watch this bullshit. Mm. Well, I'm glad tonight it doesn't come on at the SmackDown. It comes on Saturday night, so we're gonna see what happens. I, I'm ready for Kenny Omega to become, you know, he he, he can he he ran his course as Impact and also as AEW World Champion. I just would like to see somebody else. You know, uh, you know his heel. Now his heel character work has been good, but his promos come off to me as very PG-ish, man. He he doesn't come off as convincing or uh, serious with his promo. If he let Don Callis do the talk for him like he did earlier, man, that would make him so much better than what he is now. Because mm-hmm. yeah, the more he, the more he talks on the mic, the more like the more believability and credibility for his heel character goes down. Mm-hmm. Really do, man. Really yeah. do. Speaking of Don Callis, you know, uh, this whole impact in AEW uh, relationship, friendship thing you, that they got going on, like, what is it? Like, how come uh, the Good Brothers are the only guys to come over from AEW in this whole little back and forth sort of feud that they got going on? And it's just, it's just like, What's going on? Like, I, I really don't understand the relationship that's going on there. It, it don't even seem like it's worse than the evasion storyline back in 20, 2001. Yeah. Uh, as bad as that storyline was, yeah, this, this whole thing to me has been a dumpster fire. It, you know, Impact really has not benefited much from having Kenny Omega as their champion. Uh, it, it's like every, every week that he appears as champion on Impact, the ratings 
have been taking a nose dive, a rapid nose dive. And that's mm-hmm. not good. So I feel like, you know, uh, this reminds me of a uh, of a wrestler that cut a promo recently said, and he spoke some truth about this. He said, he told, you know, he told his opponent, I'm going to make you my bitch just like AEW's making impact dares. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> hey, man, AEW is, is impact. AEW has make impact their little bitch, man, because yeah. you feel me? Like, they even let uh, AEW was like, all right, you know, y- 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 y'all my little bitch. Y'all can use the, uh, the dailies place for the main event of uh, – uh, against all odds and stuff like that. And I was like, really? Y'all couldn't give them the whole entire show? Y'all just yeah, get- that, 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 they should have just had fan, some fans there for that match. Yeah. But to have it at an empty dangerous place, to me, that was bullshit. Yeah, that was. That's bull crap, man. Bull yeah. crap. Bull crap. Yeah. Hey, man, come on, man. I appreciate you joining me this week on the 1130 Podcast Talk Pro Wrestling, man. Hey, yo, man, before you go, any shout outs, any questions, any anything you like to say? Um, You know, I, I really would uh, like it if Monday Wrestling focuses more on the so- storytelling, the chemistry, the selling, the psychology, and the emotional aspects of wrestling. And I feel like those elements of wrestling are missing in many of today's uh, wrestling matches. Mm. That is that is something true right there. Yes, the yeah. psych- you you were right about that, man. You were right. You were right about that. Um, any shout outs? Anything you you know? Anything else? Oh no, I'm I'm fine. Okay, man. I appreciate it, man. Once again, I appreciate you reaching out to me, man, when I had my man Dirk uh, on the podcast from Rap and Wrestle. And oh, yeah. I, I, I thank you, man, for uh, being down. Uh, once again, shout out to the Clock Street Wrestling Podcast, the Java Taste Podcast, the Dirty Hills Podcast, all the wrestling podcasts, man. Check them out, man. Once again, uh, come on, man. Thank you for joining me this week on the 1130 Podcast. Sure thing. Yo, Kwame, man, it was an awesome time having you here on the 1130 Podcast. Talk pro wrestling, man. Chopping it up about wrestling this week, man. For real, it's, it's, it's nothing like it, man. The wrestling podcast is to me, man. It's always a hitter. It's always dope, man. Chopping it up with like-minded people, man, such as, you know, myself, man, that love wrestling, you know? And to hear my man Kawama talk about, you know, how, you know, wrestling saved his life and just, you know, diving into it, man, when he, you know, watching Nitro and, you know, like I was saying, man, I didn't grow up watching Nitro. So that's why, like, when I see other wrestling promotions, such as, you know, Impact or whether it's AEW, whatever it is, is, or Ring of Honor, man, I try to keep a little eye on it because, Back in the days, I was just only glued to WWE, F, whatever you want to call it. But uh, man, yo, it was just off the chain, man. Of course, you you couldn't help to be glued, man. It just smile. You feel me? Like my man was saying, when the glass broke, you just was on them 10 toes, man. Or if you was in a wheelchair, you know you was doing 360s or donuts. <laughs> you was doing your thing, man. But man, wrestling has came a long way. And man, it needs some it needs some change. We need some change. We about three weeks or four weeks away from a lot of fans in attendance again to Monday Night Raw, SmackDown, house shows, pay-per-views, and all that good stuff, man. But yo, Kawami man, Shakira, I appreciate you joining me here on the 1130 podcast. Talk pro wrestling this week, man. It was awesome. It was awesome, awesome, awesome time. Uh chopping it up with you. For real, you guys. It's Friday once again. Expire somebody, you guys. Expire somebody. Do whatever you gotta do. Be positive and all that good stuff, man. Yo, once again, man, I appreciate you guys joining me on the podcast. Before I go, you guys, you know what time it is. Don't forget to follow the 1130 podcast on all social media platforms. Follow me on Twitter at Dre on Wheels. Follow me on Instagram at the 1130 podcast. Like the 1130 podcast on Facebook. Subscribe. Yeah, subscribe to the 1130 podcast on YouTube. And yeah, the 1130 podcast, talk pro wrestling, you guys. Once again, subscribe on YouTube and hit that notification bell on Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Uh, so you don't miss an episode, man, for real. And leave a five-star rating in the review. If you would like to be a guest here on the podcast, email me. That's day 1130 podcast at gmail.com. Com or just DM me on social media so we can work, man. For real, once again, man, inspire someone or inspire yourself. Be uplifted, man. Some crazy times we got going on, so we gotta lean on one another, man, to get through these some get get through these times, man. We all ain't got the best of life, but some of us may who do, you know, like lean out, man. Share a hand. But yo, man, it's been an awesome episode, man. Once again on the podcast, you guys. It's Friday. What's the travel chief gonna do tonight on SmackDown, you guys? For real, he done he done 
I ain't gonna say he murdered Ray Mysterio. He murdered Dominic. The crazy thing is, they say Dominic gonna be out for some time, and they just they put the tag team titles on Ray and Dominic, and they you know father son tag team, great, all that great. But now Dominic is supposed to be out for some time. Like the SmackDown tag team division, the Raw tag team division too, but it, it's at least better than SmackDowns. But it's some shit, bro. It is literally some shit, man. And whoo, like. Bianca Belair, man, I love her, man. I, I really do. She had that moment at Mania. I just like Sam with Kawhi, man. I just feel as though they're gonna boo her. They're gonna boo her. Just everything they've been booking her. How I mean, even though she's been winning it, coming out strong in a little bit, but also with these little wacky ass storylines and Bailey laughing at her or whatever like that. Or she come out laughing at Bailey. Like, come on, like, come on. It's other people who's watching this program besides eight year olds and nine year olds, but. That's how I feel with that one, man. Other than that, you guys, is Jimmy going to be on SmackDown tonight to say, you know, what's up? Is he out? Is he in? What's up? What's going on with that, man? Like, I'm intrigued. SmackDown is telling the best stories ever, man. Like, for real. Like I, I was saying, always a Monday Night Raw fan, and I was loving it when they came three hours. Now it's just, it ran a course, and it's stale. But SmackDown is just, I never thought I would say it. You know, SmackDown is the shit. You feel me? Even back in the days with SmackDown, like 02, 03 SmackDown around that time, 01 maybe, but 02, 03 SmackDown, man, everybody was everybody was like, man, SmackDown better than Raw. SmackDown better than Raw. I mean, of course, you know, Raw was always, you know, was the entertainment side of it, and SmackDown was the wrestling side. You know, SmackDown come off, start with a match. Raw come on, 20-minute promo. <laughs> you feel me? So it was like, that's where your major stories were at on Raw, and that's that, That's what I leaned it towards. Even though SmackDown had great wrestling or whatnot, I was, you know, tell me a story in the team. You, you feel me? Like, it was, but man, SmackDown is shit now. So, hey, see what goes down on SmackDown. And of course, you guys, we got AEW Dynamite tomorrow night, you guys. Yes, we got Jungle Boy taking on Kenny Omega for the AEW World Championship and some other cool matches, you guys, man. Y'all, I'm about to head on out of here. Hope you guys stay safe and blessed. Have a great weekend. Enjoy some more wrestling, you guys. Yo, it's your man Dre, a.k.a. Dre on Wheels. And I'm out. I'm from the city, yeah. D.C., that's where I'm from, 1130 Podcast, Dre, your wheels, he is the one, hey. let's get it, yeah, who with me, hey. you know it. let's get it, yeah, you know it. who with me, yeah. I'm from the city, yeah. D.C., that's where I'm from, let's get it. 1130 yeah. Podcast, Dre, your hey, wheels, he is the one, he the one, nigga, so let's get breeze, it, baby. he the one, who with me, so yeah. breeze, baby. let's get it, you, you know with it. me. Yeah, they gon' hate, but they ain't stopping this. I'ma keep making hits. Dre and Wills, you know it ain't no copying. Was you sitting there on the carpet with us? Yeah, we knew we had some options. We blessed. We don't got no problems. Speak something that I gotta be honest. Told him he was gon' blow, and that's my promise. Promise, promise. We too smart, and we leave with a heart.